Hi, how y'all doing? Good, I hope. Hope you're staying cool. It's really hot outside. I've been so busy trapped in the house cleaning and thinking. And I'm worried about health care. And that subject hasn't come up in quite some time now since they're off on a major deal. Uh, I recently read a book on some of the history of medicine. It's called Seeking the Cure, A History of Medicine in America by Ira Rutko. Kind of hard to see this. Oh. Yeah. I'll read you the flap on here. A timely, authoritative, an entertaining history of medicine in America by an eminent physician. Despite all that has been written and said about American medicine, narrative accounts of its history are uncommon. Until Ira Rutcrow's Seeking the Curse, there have been no modern works, either for the lay reader or the physician, that convey the extraordinary story of medicine in the United States. Yet for more than three centuries, the flowering of medicine, its triumphal progress from ignorance to science, has proven crucial to Americans' understanding of their country and themselves. Seeking the Cure tells the tale of American medicine with a series of little-known antidotes that bring to life the grand and unceasing struggle by physicians to shed uns unsound, if venerated, beliefs and practices and adopt new medicines and treatments, often in the face of controversy and scorn. Rutcrow, Rutcow expertly weaves the stories of individual doctors, what they believed and how they practiced with the economic, political, and social issues facing the nation. Among the book's many historical personages are Cotton Mather, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, whose timely adoption of a controversial medical practice probably saved the Continental Army. Benjamin Rush, James Garfield, who was killed by his doctors, not by an assassin's bullet, and Joseph Lister. The book touches such diverse topics as smallpox and the Revolutionary War, the establishment of the first medical schools, medicine during the Civil War, railroad medicine, and the beginnings of specialization, the rise of a medical industrial complex, and the thrilling yet costly advent of modern disease-cutting technologies, utterly unimaginable a generation ago, such as gene therapies, body scanners, and robotic surgeries. In our time of spiritual national debate, over the future of American health care amid a seemingly infinite flow of new medical discoveries and pharmaceutical products, Red Cow's account provides readers with an essential historic, social, and even philosophical context. Working in the grand America's American literary tradition established by such eminent writer doctors as Oliver Wendell Holmes, William Carlos Williams, Sherwin Newland, and Oliver Sacks. He combines the historian's perspective with the physician's seasoned expertise. Capetius learned and gracefully told, seeking the cure will satisfy armchair historians and doctors alike. For as Rutkow shows, the history of American medicine is a portrait of America itself. A little bit about Ira Rutkow is a general surgeon and historian of American medicine. He also holds a doctorate of public health from Johns Hopkins University. Among Dr. Rutkow's books on medical history, his surgery and Ill illustrated history was selected as a New York Times Notable Book of the Year. Dr. Rutkow's recent works include 
Bleeding Blue and Gray, A Narrative History of Civil War Medicine, and James A. Garfield, A Political Biographer, and Reappraisal of the Medical Aspects of Garfield's Assassination. Dr. Rutkow and his wife divide their time between New York City and their farm in the Hudson Valley. I'm especially interested in this medicine as I need a doctor but can't afford one. But when I was small, my mother went to the doctor a lot, but they kept their doctor bill paid all the time. It was a fair and just price. And now, you cannot afford to go to a doctor if you have very little money. And there are some things that could help you that cost just so much less than the expensive things now that I grew concerned about policies and the whole structure of healthcare now. So, I did find another thing in this book about homopathy. And uh, there was those people in, in the government, and uh, I believe it had to do with the wars, that saw that homopathy medicines were very workable. And that, um, that they got into a fight with the doctors and things, so they would... So they would um, go to doctors only. And it's an interesting dispute going on. And a couple of the paragraphs is, many of the era's orthodox physicians argued that they had defeated homeopathic medicine through science. In turn, some modern medical historians contend that today's medical doctors descended directly from orthodox pr practitioners and deny homopaths any lineage. Both claims are incorrect. Revolutionary changes in the natural sciences transformed the whole of medical theory, medical education and training, and me medical practice. As much as orthodox physicians deem homopathy a medical sect based on nonsensical theories, their own clini clinical activities were haphazard and unscientific. The regular profession was little more than orthodox secretarianism with its own exclusive dogma of bloodletting, boondoggles, and irrational druggings. The truly meaning meaningful difference between the two groups was that regu regulars enjoyed mainstream support because they outnumbered homeopaths. Today our profession is regarded by the state, explained a thoughtful orthodox physician, as only a numerical strong medical sect. Thus, neither group can be regarded as the true ancestor of the modern medical doctor. Development in scientific medicine snuffed out illogical and unscientific thinking for the whole of healing. In contrast to the clinical disagreements and personal feuds that plagued 19th century medicine, therapeutic convergence and professional compromise between regulars and secretarians characterize the beginnings of 20th century American medicine. Modern medicine has little sympathy for allopathy or for homopathy, what wrote one perceptive observer. It simply denies outright the relevancy or value of either doctrine. It wants not dogma, but facts. Its countenance is no presupposition that is not common to it with all the natural sciences with all logical thinking. And one of the main points in this is homeopathy would be for natural drugs that have helped people. And if a doctor doesn't believe you have this healing in your body that he needs to help support to get you well, then I wouldn't trust that doctor. Not for a minute. And I think all of this is why they're against legalizing marijuana too. Some doctors are for it, but too many are not. Because they're still getting kickbacks and gifts from pharmaceutical companies. That's wrong. And anything they've ever given me was this outrageously priced medicine and they knew I was poor. 
Were they deliberately putting suffering on me? I have to wonder. But I will return as I have a quick job to do. And I have one more thing to put on, so I'll go to number two. Alright, wait for me.